Good morning everybody. Here I am, it's Saturday morning. Uh, I finished off at the workshop last night. I've been out this morning to uh, just drop a parcel off at the post office for my cousin. I should have taken the camera with me, but I forgot. And I, I over the last week or so, I've been coming to realise that I do a lot of stuff that I should video, that I don't video. Because I arrive at the workshop, I put the camera and the gear on the bench and I get stuck in. And then I realise half an hour later, I should be filming this. There's a lot of things that I should be filming, but don't. And this YouTube business is a bit of a discipline. It uh, has to be concentrated on and you have to just be aware that I could be filming this and I'm not. And so what I'm going to try and do is be better at it and to film more and to film more interesting stuff having said that I went out this morning and what I would have shown you had I filmed it was completely empty streets and a virtually completely empty post office which pleased me no end I must say but uh, it's just just amazing just Saturday morning 10 o'clock 10.30 in Driffield and, and there's just nobody at all on the street it's just completely closed down which is a good thing uh, I mean we are one of the least infected areas of the country thank goodness but uh, uh, this is this is astounding it really is anyway uh, I've got a little bit to show you of what I did yesterday at the workshop uh, and uh, I've just put it together so I'll put this on the front of it and I'll get it posted up for you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay healthy. I hope you enjoy it all. And I'll catch you all later. Bye for now. Hi chaps. Well here I am again in the workshop. Breaking all the coronavirus rules. Although I'm in isolation in Langtoft. Instead of being in isolation in Driffield. So I don't suppose it matters. But uh, we haven't started with roadblocks up here yet, so who knows what's going to happen in the future. Well, I haven't been doing much this week, so I've not got much for a video, but I'm going to put some footage together and see what I can get. Anyway, it's Friday already, and this is what I've been doing today and yesterday. This is for my daughter's roof garden, and it's one of possibly four or five cold frames that I'm making up out of all the junk wood I've got laying around the place, basically it's a good way of getting rid of it. Uh, I just need to put some hinges on this one and then I'm going to make another square frame that will fit underneath it to boost its height. Uh, and I think I'm going to make it modular so that this can be lifted onto the frame if they want extra height when the plants start to grow a bit. Uh, got the hinges to put on yet but basically good old father-in-law came up with these already made uh, which he'd use as a little greenhouse which he'd take to pieces no longer wanted so uh, I'm using this discarded uh, decking that I used for the shelves on the bench uh, and it proved very very useful again the decking was uh, we bought some new decking to finish off with but most of the decking was uh, from a friend of mine who pulled it out of a skip uh, all thrown away in a skip and it was in huge long length so it was really useful uh, anything else to report? Well I haven't got coronavirus yet uh, the part for the weld has come but I haven't had chance to fit it yet I've ordered myself a capacitance meter today for testing electrical capacitance which is something I've never had before because I've never really had a need for it but uh, in the last few well in the last year I've come across several occasions where I've thought I can look at this capacitor I can test it roughly with an AVO I can see it charge and then discharge it again and then see it charge up again but I don't really know if it's wandered away from its actual rated value and, and that's what happens with capacitors, they, they change value quite a lot as they age. So I've ordered that, when that comes we'll have a look at it and have a play around with it, see if it's any good, see if I've wasted my 13 95 but I doubt it. Uh, right, 
I'm going to crack on with this, put some hinges on it, and then make the frame to go underneath it. I mean, I think we'll call it a day. I had a hell of a hell of a morning this morning. Uh, I went out to the doctor's surgery to pick up some uh, medicine for my mum, which is why I'm in Langtop. Uh, that went really easy. And then I had to go to the chemist to pick up a prescription for my wife that was queued at two metre intervals all the way around the corner to the doctor's surgery, just around the corner. Uh, that took me about three quarters of an hour to an hour to get through there. Then I went to uh, the supermarket to get some uh, essential supplies, not much, just, just a, a little bit. And also the wife wanted some bags of compost for this. So I went, nipped in and did my shopping, got straight in with the trolley, did the shopping, came out, put the shopping in the car, got, a, got the trolley and then filled the trolley with bags of compost, got back to the door and had to join a queue, but I was in that queue for nearly half an hour. So there you go. But I got in and got it paid for. I should have probably just linked it with the trolley full of uh, compost, but I'm, I'm not as used to it. Uh, anything else to report? No, I don't think so. Uh, when I get this finished and I've made the uh, piece for underneath, I'll show you it completed. Uh, so, I'll be with you in a bit. Catch you later. Right, chaps. Here it is. Uh, finished. For This is number one. There's another four of those frames over there so I can make five of these. Uh, hinged lid. And this piece is a riser piece, so that top piece will lift off it to lower the height to start the seedlings off. And then as they get bigger, just add the ring and it goes up in the air. Right? It's a riser. As you can see, my woodwork is more creative than precise. And I've had to... <laughs> oh God, this is embarrassing. I've had to join pieces of this uh, decking together to get lengths long enough to match these tops but it'll work it's only a bit of uh, shall we say rustic woodwork anyway so I'm sure it'll be fine I'm sure she'll be very pleased with it and I'm sure she'll grow lots of things in it right it's four o'clock Friday I'm gonna go and self isolate back in Griffin so I'll catch you later Bye all. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay safe in the current coronavirus crisis. Stay healthy. Stay indoors. I mean, I've come out here today. I'm not really supposed to, but I'm here by myself. I'm just going, it's like just going to a different room for me. Uh, shopping and, and, and everything this morning was much worse. And, and, uh, although people at Indrafield do seem to be observing the two metre distance. But uh, take your vitamins, stay healthy. Bye now. And here we are, upstairs in the back bedroom. And what you're looking at there is the, uh, the other side of the Moot Hill uh, that you saw in my drive back from Langtoft. Now, the hill that we came down as we saw that is just over there. And what I've brought you up here for is to show you Emily's roof garden. So if we just come down here, it's just started to rain actually. There's the coal trim. Here's the grow bags already in position. As you can see, I've taken the mineral off. There was about a quarter of a ton of mineral on this roof. I've taken the mineral off and I've put it underlay on it and covered the underlay with pond liner so we've got an extra waterproof layer and that goes right over if you can see through this heavily damaged uh, double glazed panel that goes right over to the other side there so we've got quite an area there and when you look at the size of our garden which is not very big at all you can see how much growing area there is up here and we're going to utilise it, but we must make sure not to overload it. Okay chaps, see you later.